Long distance PBA players perspective, and we are talking the 2020 PBA Tournament of Champions. We have the title match combatants with us today, Chris Prather and Bill O'Neill. Thanks guys for joining us and walking us through this title match. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, man, it's gonna be fun. So Bill, coming into this match, you're the top seed and you had a fantastic 2019, maybe your best year ever, one of your top two for sure. Um, you started kind of slowly in 2020 though, you missed cuts in the first few events. And then this week was the start of a really good run for you. What was the difference coming into this that set you on that run? Yeah, I think, um, you know, just being able to be like on tour again and having like multiple weeks in a row uh, helps me out. I like to get kind of in a, in a groove. Um, you know, we had a pretty big shakeup right before we, you know, came out uh, for, the, for the season with, with Brunswick acquiring Ebonite. So I had some like, you know, equipment issues to try to, to, to work out and try to figure out which balls I liked and, you know, try to put everything together. Uh, and I was able to come home for a few days before um, the, you know, the tournament champions this year. And I got to work with my dad a little bit and just straighten some things out. Um, you know, and, and just, you know, just had to get the confidence back. And um, I, you know, I never really wavered and I never thought that, I, you know, it was going to be like a lost season. And, um, you know, I certainly didn't think I was going to come out and lead the TFC at that at that point, but I was pretty confident I have a decent week. Chris, you qualified fourth and tournament champions. This is no surprise, but you had to get through four Hall of Fame eligible players. And on your way to this title match, you tripped a few four pins. Not necessarily a bad thing for you. No, uh, in college at Wichita State, we were, you know, it was basically preached upon that tripping four pins was indicating good ball motion. So every single time I get up to throw a shot, I focus on trying to trip a four pin. And when I succeed at that, I know that I'm doing the right thing. Um, and whenever I don't, I know that I'm either really close or a little bit further than what I would like to be. So for me, tripping a four pin is just a huge momentum boost for me. And uh, I know against Belmo, I think I tripped two or three in a row. And uh, there's a little meme going around of my facial reaction after the third one. And uh, that's pretty much how I feel after every single trip four. So for me, trip fours are huge. All right, Chris Prather versus Bill O'Neill. Title match, 2020 Tournament of Champions. For me, a lot of people were asking uh, at the beginning, you know, were you thinking about shooting 300? And, you know, here it is, obviously. Uh, I didn't even think about it until after the match. Did anybody come up and ask you the same thing? Well, no, because I split the first frame. So nobody, I don't think it was on anybody's mind. But yeah, you can't, there's no way you think about it. I mean, it's only been done, you know, whatever it was, 20 some, some odd times in the history of it. So you're not, you're not, you're not thinking about it. I didn't really think they were, uh, you know, as easy as you made them on the show. So it, it was, certainly wasn't a, wasn't a thing that I, I, I was thinking about. And, um, yeah, and I, and I wasn't uh, like I wasn't super sure of my uh, strategy. So I think that kind of uh, you know probably probably helped that I wasn't thinking right. about it because I didn't know if I, I didn't know how many doubles I was gonna I was gonna throw and. Um, yeah, I tried to stay out of the middle of the lane. I, I didn't. I, I wasn't really all that confident that I could uh, uh, that I could keep up from the middle. Uh, so I thought I'd try to develop a little bit something to the right. And I think you know, as you'll probably see here, I, with, with a few more shots of practice, it might have might have been okay. But I, I certainly used the ball that was uh, a little too strong. Yeah, I remember you uh, didn't start out too hot, but then as the game went on. Uh, the ball motion definitely got better and I didn't, you know, I wasn't really looking at the score or anything like that. Um, but as soon as you started, you know, doubling and, and then I think you threw a, a turkey or four bagger in there at some point and I was like, okay, well, maybe this is a match. You know, I, I like I said, I never looked at the score, but, you know, I had so many people saying, you know, man, you were one strike away from 300. I was like, you're, you're one strike away from a, a million. I'm like, yeah, but if I had the front 10, there's no, you know, I'm in front of the ball return yeah. at that point. Yeah, you know, my luck, I'm going to fall on my face, foul, throw, you know, get six either way. So the, the whole thought process changes as soon as you start out with the front five or, you know, seven or whatever. Sure. I think like, you know, people who, you know, maybe not bowl at our level or bowl at all. Think like, oh, you had 280. You were really close to 300. But I think for most of us, like you spared in the second. So it's not yeah. like a, a thing you were, to, you know, you weren't really in probably in your mind that you were you you were that that close to, uh, you know, to 300. And 
Yeah. Now, if I had front eight or nine or whatever, then sure. then it's a totally different ball game. But now, no, did, it's. Did you did, did you think you had this you know this kind of game in you when you uh you know when we started the match? Um, I thought I had two twenty to two thirty ball motion. Uh, that right lane for me got easier as the 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 ladder went on, mainly because the I got into a strong enough ball. But I didn't think I had 280 out there. I thought I had 220 to 230 pretty well, because um, that's pretty much what I had been shooting the the previous games, other than the one against Sean. Um, but I thought that you, you know, because you like to play a little firmer, a little straighter, that you were going to have something in the the 220 to to even 240s. You know, just so I was like, okay, well, I'm going to do what I like to do and he's going to do what he likes to do. And we're going to just see what happens. Yeah. And that's, and that's kind of why I played him the way that I did. Cause I was, uh, you know, thinking you're probably going to bowl to 20 to 30. And, uh, you know, I thought my, my range of scores, uh, was going to be really, really, uh, different uh, if I played in, cause I wasn't really sure what I was going to do. So yeah, I might've stumbled into something that could have been a big one, but you know, it was a pretty good chance that I could have bowled, you know, 180, 170 from, from in there. Um, you know, because especially, you know, people don't realize this when they're watching at home, but um, the people who are coming onto the step ladder don't get that much practice. So I think I had eight shots total. So you get like four in each lane. And that's not really a whole lot of time to experiment with different, um, you know, with different lines out there. So I, you're, 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 you're just going with your gut and you have to, you have to stick to it. You have to say, All right, I'm, com I'm committing and this is where I'm going to play. And, you know, we're, we're going to go down with the ship if it's, you know, if, if, if that's the case, because, you know, to, to, you can't be wishy-washy out there. You got to, you got to pick your, pick your spot, especially when you're the leader. You only get, you don't have a lot of time. So you just you only bowl one game. So. Right. Yeah. hundred percent. And, you know, I, you know, everybody always wants to be the, the one seed or the two seed, you know, they want to be as high up on the ladder as possible, but then that leads to something like this where the four or five seed gets on a little bit of a roll. They have all the momentum. They're comfortable on TV. They get those first couple shots. The, the nerves go away a little bit and then, you know, you get really relaxed. And uh, I think that that was one of the very benefiting factors to me uh, coming out on top here. And I, think if the the roles were reversed you know maybe i shoot 2 or 210 whatever you had and then maybe you have 260 270 280 whatever you know you never know but i think that that's you know there's there's advantages to both sides of it yeah for sure i'm, I'm you know if you ask anybody before the week starts they would always want to be the one seed but if you asked right before the title match who would you rather be and you'd always pick the guy who's coming on Right, yeah, exactly. you know, because you, you, it's just so much easier. You, you, the, the the nerves are less. Like no matter what, even though you had, you know, you didn't have a major to this point, you were definitely, I would assume, less nervous than me because you've just been bowling for an hour and a half on, on TV. So you're just kind of dialed in. You're just kind of going through, going through the you know the motions, and, and you knew exactly what you had to do it at, at that point. Right, hundred percent. And you know the, you know, for me it was. I was super relaxed at this point. I knew exactly what I needed to do. I was doing what I wanted to do on the lanes. And uh, I know we didn't really talk about it yet, but in the third frame, I got one on the little strike tracks there. It said to 2.9. And off my hand, I thought that one went in the gutter. So <laughs> I, I, I remember I remember sitting on the bench, and when, when that one came back and hit the pocket, I was like, oh, yeah, we're going to – because <laughs> I'm, I'm not certain 220 is going to be good here. Because if that one gets back, I, I, I'm probably in trouble. Right. Because the you know the strike tracks here says you know 4.7. The shot before was 6.2. So I missed by you know three or four boards, five boards almost down lane at 40 feet. It's only got 20 feet to come back. You know half the lane almost. So you know after it came back off the spot, I was like, okay, we're we're in a good spot here. Yeah, and I, I, I like the I like the left lane better from from where I was. There's a little bit more like rounded motion, and uh, and so and so I could see where your you know, your ball would kind of bounce off a little bit more um, on the, on that left lane, getting it getting it further right. Uh, right on this right lane, I had a little bit of early hook in the front, and then uh, you'll see later on in the match where I you know I throw one throw one okay, and it just flat tens and. Mm -hmm. 
and that's probably you know an indication that the that, that the ball was a little bit too strong yeah and uh from where i was um the right lane was much tighter down lane to the right which is why i was throwing the bigger ball just to get it to pick up because i was using so much rotation just to get it to go through the pins that you know i still needed that ball to start slowing down uh way earlier than what it was on that right lane specifically because you, you you missed the head pin uh, a few times didn't you on the uh, uh I missed the head pin. yeah every so the only time i did not miss the head pin was the match against jason and then the match against you i missed the head pin every other time after the yeah. commercial break so yeah and then what's funny is the the week later at the players both shots out of the commercial break i missed the head pin yeah, is, is that doing real you, good I, do, you know, do you know what uh like do, do you know what you're doing that like what causes that or is it just like just something that's with the group yeah group? i think it's i think it's just um being there just sitting around and and getting a little too relaxed um and and you know because i think at uh the toc we had like four or five minutes or something like that it, it was a little bit longer uh break so we're sitting around for four or five minutes and then it's like oh hey you got to go bowl while i'm you know chit-chatting and whatever with you know the reps whoever's there the guys and you for me i just got a little too relaxed and and unfocused so it was a little tough for me to you know get lined back up for those couple shots and then once we got further into the ladder i was like okay let's Focus on what we're going to be doing here. Focus on what's important, and you know, put a you know good shot online. And uh, I think bowling against Belmo definitely, uh, you know, made me kind of flip the switch a little bit to to get to that you know higher focus. So basically, what I'm hearing is the next time that we bowl a title match together, I got a petition for a commercial break because. <laughs> <laughs> there is no commercial break in title matches. And I just realized you're saying that. I'm like, yeah, there's no break here. And, he, you know, doesn't miss the, the – you don't miss flush, let alone the let alone the, uh, the head pin. So, um, yeah, we're going to need to correct that for the next time. Yeah, and you know what's funny is the sixth frame, if you watch the strike tracks, the shot prior that struck was at, like, seven. And I got the one in the sixth frame right early, and it got to, like – four and a half down lane or whatever and it just peeled off of it and i was like all right well if that was two matches ago that's missing the head pin so i've you know realistically i did yeah. miss the head pin. the lane just didn't well, let you, me. You, you were able to get you know far enough left at that point to where you're not uh you're not hitting the hang hang spot as much you know because you're, right. you're able to you know, cross 25 at the, at the hours and I, you know I, I think uh for people watching this i think that they need to understand you see all the time how upset people get about players having area you know mm -hmm. and it's like you assume that it's a it's a luck thing we're like yeah occasionally yes yeah, somebody stumbling upon ball reaction is is luck but you know you have area in this match because you created it you know like you're using two different balls they're not similar at all uh you know yeah you're playing in this in a similar spot but the, you know the, the the way you're going about it is different like you're creating all of that all of that area and i think that's a you know, something that people need to realize that is a thing out in the PBA tour. That, that the reason why, you know, the scores are high sometimes is because of the lanes, but then, you know, in other times it's because guys are able to create massive ball reaction. And it's not by accident. Right, exactly. And I think that's the biggest difference between guys that are having a lot of success on tour consistently and the, you know, typical house bowler that kind of not necessarily falls into good ball motion or creating room or area or anything like that. But we know how to generate area, not necessarily on command, but we know how to get there. We know how to, you know, go through our arsenal and, and get our ball to pick up in different spots to create more area than uh, the typical bowler. So, you know, I think that that gets lost in translation a lot of time because a lot of people think that bowling is just get up there, throw the ball and, you know, hope it strikes. Yeah, I mean, especially if you just tune in for the, you know, for the for the TV shows. You know, they they're not seeing people aren't seeing that. You know, throughout the week, you played them fairly straight, uh, if I remember right, in the beginning of of 
you know, of blocks and especially in match play. And then you know, it takes a, it takes a lot to get the, the beginning of the tournament to the end end up at this point. So you're certainly not, you know, you're certainly not sliding 40 and just, you know, spinning it over to five uh, from ball one every every shot of the tournament. So, yeah, there, there are a lot of guys that, that can do that and do do that. But I believe in this tournament, this was the first tournament that I actually, my game plan was to throw urethane. And uh, I believe in the beginning of match play, basically the entire time, um, I started with urethane. Urethane and I threw it until it didn't strike anymore, and then I started doing this. And I did try to throw urethane over here whenever we started, and uh, it did not look good at all. It hooked as soon as it touched the lane, and I was just like, okay, I got to figure something else out. And I think that's why Sean and I's first match was so low scoring. I think it was 180 to uh, 170 or low 180 or something like that. It was a relatively close match, but it was, uh, you know, just – the lanes play totally different on TV than they do during the week. Yeah, and I think that, you know, if we would have bowled in that same exact scenario, uh, you know, you probably don't make that out of the first match or two if it was if this was a year earlier. You know, you had a lot more experience on television and you're able to get away from a, a game plan and practice that you see, you know, you had and it wasn't working. And, um, you know, being the first match, you're able to, to get away from the game plan because you have more time to – have more time to practice and, and 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 kind of feel it out. So that that just kind of goes to the experience, and that's why a lot of times when you're in the beginning parts of your career and uh, you know you're you're starting out on TV, you make a couple of shows here and there. It's really difficult because it's such a different experience from anything else that you would that you would do. Uh, you know, the practice is limited. You're you're taking commercial breaks. The you know, you're you're running back and forth to the practice lane to stay loose. Like, there's a lot going on that is so much different than you know, then you would get in a, in a regular event. So, um, yeah, so that, you, you won this event because obviously you're super talented, but the, uh, the experience certainly, uh, certainly helped out. Oh, yeah, for sure. And it, I think it goes to show that, like, everybody – so back home they used to call me lightning in a bottle because I would just come in, oh, well, whatever, and – and they're like, oh, you just you're, you know, you only strike sometimes, and uh, kind of pissed me off a little bit. And I think I'm finally getting to that point where I have the the experience and the knowledge to get to that point where I can strike more often than than not. And uh, you know, this the time on TV and the the confidence it's given me is huge. Like not being able to bowl right now is absolutely killing me. I bowled for the first time yesterday and my legs are sore, everything's sore. And uh, it just makes me want to get back out there because very much like you, I, I, the more we bowl, the better I get. You know, the more comfortable I get on the lanes and uh, the more I get to see the lane, the, the more confidence I have. And I think that goes for a lot of guys, but you know, it's just, this was uh, after a month of, not necessarily struggling, but not really bowling that great and just kind of falling into ball motion to the point where I could finally see the lane and know what I needed to do to get it to strike. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, we, we, I think we had a pretty mirrored first, uh, first month of the year where we, you know, maybe got a couple checks and, um, didn't really, didn't really do much. And, but that's, you know, that's a, a that it's a, it's a confidence thing. It's a belief in yourself. That you know, it's, it's going to play out. You just got to keep, you know, trusting what you're, what you're doing out there, and um, that's why you see, you know, after a you know a 15 week tour or whatever, you're going to see the better players, uh, you know, come out on top. And you know, just like uh, you know, what you just said about, you know, something that guy said at home that would irritate you, you know, you, it could very easily go the other way too, where um, if you're mentally not not there and you don't believe in yourself, you could people could say that to you and you would start to believe it and take you right out of any chance you have of being successful. So yeah, you just gotta, you, you keep that belief in yourself and that's really key.